Christchurch, New Zealand's city of the plains. Here, when spring comes to Canterbury, daffodils bloom gay and golden in the woodland of Hagley Park. Nearby are tall buildings, busy street, and the heart of the city, Cathedral Square. Here stands a noble minster, the Cathedral Church of Christ, with its tall copper spire. Beneath its dominating grandeur, move buses, trams, cars. North, south, east and west from the square they go, down long straight streets laid out in regular patterns by the pioneers long ago. Every city street is flat, so there are bicycles everywhere. This is a city of cycling. Mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, all on wheels. Cyclists of all ages from 8 to 80 ride to play or work each day. There are thousands of them. And only Copenhagen is said to boast more bicycles. Here, the statue of Captain Scott, white as Antarctic. There, the graceful arch of the Bridge of Remembrance memorial of two world wars. On the other bank of the Avon, a world of art and learning. The art gallery, red brick and white stone, tucked away in the botanic gardens. Canterbury University College, weathered grey stone buildings, shadowed cloisters. It was here Lord Rutherford began a great career. Not far away are the grey Gothic provincial chamber and its attached wooden buildings. Survivals of the days when Canterbury was self-governing. Later, in the botanic gardens, there are brighter and bolder colours. The azaleas are like flame in the sunshine. The gay tulips, deep purple, pale pink, smooth yellow, are massed like soldiers, standing stiffly proud for all to admire. This is the home of cricket in Christchurch, the green and pleasant sward of Hagley Oval. To this tree-bordered ground, generations of cricketers have come to pay allegiance to the king of summer sports. In summer, thousands flock to swim from New Brighton's beaches. These surf teams are drilling to fit themselves better for their voluntary task of guarding the public safety. Each year, their vigilance saves many bathers from drowning. For yachtsmen, the wide expanse of the estuary provides perfect sailing conditions. Its waters are shallow, but ideal for pottering about in small boats. Beside the estuary, on the way to Sumner, is a relic of the early days, a cottage built of cob, the mixture of earth and tussock used by the pioneers in place of timber. Today, modern homes of brick, timber, concrete, cling to the rocky hillside on the other side of the Sumner Road. The port of Littleton, looking like a toy model from the hills above it, is the gateway to Christchurch. A railway tunnel pierces the hills between port and city. From the wharves and houses of the port, a steep and narrow track winds up and over the hills. Now this is the historic bridle path over which the early pioneers toiled a century ago. Pegasus Bay curves far to the north of Christchurch. To the west, 
looms Canterbury's western wall, the snow-capped Southern Alps. Homeward bound, their plane turns north, south or west, and far beneath lies Christchurch, between the mountains and the sea. Yes, Christchurch, New Zealand's city of the plains.